Hey, what is up everybody? It is AJ here and in today's video, I'm gonna show you the best way to set up your brand new Surface device right out of the box. Whether you have a Surface Pro, a Go, a laptop, or a Surface Studio, these tips are gonna work for you. Of course, if you like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up and if you wanna supercharge the way your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, let's get into this. The device we're setting up today is my Surface Laptop Studio, but whether you have a Surface Pro, a Go, or regular Surface Laptop, what we're gonna go through is gonna work exactly the same for you. And of course, if there are a few adaptations, I'll go through those as well in the video. What we're gonna do is turn the computer on for the first time, and I do recommend making sure that it is plugged into charge, just because you wanna make sure that it has enough juice to go through a whole setup process out of the box. So first thing, of course, make sure you have that charger plugged in and turned on. This computer here is running Windows 11, although if you have Windows 10, this is actually gonna be pretty much a very similar experience for you with a few little caveats that I'm sure you can work through as well. So right out of the box, you can see we are greeted with the Windows 11 start screen and we're just gonna scroll through and find our country and our region. I'm gonna scroll up to Australia. You can of course use either the mouse and trackpad to or you can use the touch screen. Just gonna go Australia, next. Then it's gonna ask for the keyboard layout. We use the US layout here, so I'm just gonna keep it on the default, go next. And then this is where you can add a secondary layout. So say if you wanted to add a Korean keyboard, for example, you can actually go add layout. Then it's gonna ask you to pick that second language. I'm gonna scroll down, find Korea. From the setup, you can only add a maximum of two languages, and then it pushes you straight to connecting to a network or getting on the internet. So from here, you just scroll through and find your Wi-Fi and connect up. Awesome, and then once you're connected to the Wi-Fi, you simply go next and it's gonna start checking for updates. Depending on how long your computer sat in the box from when it was first produced to when you bought it from the store, this may take a while because it's gonna download all the updates that were pushed out um, in that interim from when it was first built in the factory to whatever is the latest version of Windows today. So this may take a little bit of time to check for updates and of course it will depend on your internet speed. The Microsoft and Windows end user license agreement pops up. We're simply gonna accept this because there's no way around it. And now this is a new experience in Windows 11 that I haven't actually gone through. It asks you to name your device. I'm simply gonna pop in my name, go next. The computer is gonna restart after this point, And this has now created a local account on your PC for the first time. This may take a couple of seconds while it does that restart because it may also push down and install the updates that it's just downloaded as well. So that was actually extremely quick. It only took about 20 seconds for that quick restart to happen. And now it wants us to sign in, not with that local account that we just named it, but it wants us to sign in with our Microsoft account. So things like our OneDrive, where our backups are stored. I highly recommend if you don't have a Microsoft 365 personal account to set one up um, so you can have all your files backed up to OneDrive. And of course, more importantly, your PC backed up to OneDrive as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in here with my username and password. And now that it's connected to my Microsoft account, my Hotmail or my Outlook account, it's gonna ask me to set up Face ID, which is that facial recognition. We're also gonna go through later how you can improve the recognition. So if you're in areas like low light or you wear glasses, things like that, we're gonna show you how you can improve the recognition once the computer is fully set up. For now, we're gonna go, yes, let's set this up down the bottom. And it's gonna take a biometric scan of my face. You can see it's really quick. The box sort of goes around and it just scans everything there. Then we're just gonna go next. Now we've got it set up for facial recognition. Next, we're gonna set a pin number. So right out of the box, we've got three ways to sign into our computer. We've got the password to our Microsoft account. We've got facial recognition, and now we're gonna have a pin number as well. I've just popped my pin number in. It has to be a minimum of four, but it can be as long as you want. You don't have to have special numbers unless you wanna hit the button here of include letters and symbols, and I'm just gonna hit okay. So you can see here that it already has a restoration point for one of my previous computers where I can restore it from a previous backup that's stored on saved to my Microsoft account, or I can set this up as a brand new device. I'm simply gonna go set up as a new device because this is gonna be as if we took it out for the first time and we're set up completely cleanly. Here's all the privacy settings. I don't mind having all of these turned on. So I'm simply going to accept. And then at this point here, you can customize, as they say, um, your experience, whether you want to use the computer for entertainment or you want to use it for school or creativity. I personally don't use many of these features, so I'm gonna turn all of these off, but if there's something here that stands out to you, feel free to turn any of them on. And then I'm just gonna go skip the customization, because again, I wanna set this up my way and not the way that it comes with any of these preset fabrications. 
it just talks about Microsoft 365, so I'm just gonna go next, because I already have it. If you don't, I would recommend, again, looking into getting Microsoft 365 for yourself and your family. It is really cheap, it gives you access to all of the Microsoft uh, 365 Office Suite, as well as a terabyte of storage to store all your backups from your phone, your computer. So I've been using it for the past, I think, almost 10 years now, and it is just a great way to have a backup of everything. I really like this screen here because it says we're getting the latest uh, version of Windows 11 for you, and it also tells you how much it's gonna download. It says it's gonna take a few minutes and it's gonna be about four gigs, which so you sort of know depending on your internet speed or if you think it's sitting there for a while. Well, you know it's because it's downloading and installing four gigs or more or less depending on your computer. So we're just gonna go next and we're gonna let the Surface do its thing. You can see here it says, hi, getting things ready for you. This screen is totally fine. It basically just means the computer is downloading, uh, installing and updating those Windows 11 updates. I would recommend again, if you didn't already, make sure it is plugged into charge so it doesn't turn off during the setup stage because that would be really bad for your Surface device. I'd recommend at this point, leave it for a few minutes, go make a cup of coffee, then come back and your computer should be ready to use. So that was actually a lot faster than I expected to download and install those four gigs. You can see here we've now booted up into Windows 11 on our Surface Laptop Studio. The first thing you wanna do though is go in and you wanna make sure the computer is fully up to date. So we're gonna go into the Start menu and in the Search option here, we're gonna type in the word Update and go Windows Update Settings. Because it's a Surface device and it actually pushes out both Windows as well as Surface driver updates through Windows Update, you just have to go to this one section instead of going to the OEM driver page as well. You can download it all from Windows Update and you can see here we have a whole list of pending updates and we're simply gonna go download and let that run in the background for now. If you have a device like the Surface Laptop Studio or the new Surface Pro 8s and Surface Pro 9s, you will have the Surface Slim Pen, which is hidden at the bottom of this laptop. Um, and I've just actually taken it out. It comes paired out of the box with the computer, but I will show you how to pair it if you have an older device as well. And we're gonna set up the Surface Pen and we're using the Surface app here. So it is pre-installed on here. It is called Surface and it's gonna launch us straight into the Surface app. So what we're doing right now is we're setting up the Surface Pen for the first time. And of course, the first question it's gonna ask is which hand we write with, our left or our right hand. I'm right hand, so I'm gonna select right. It's gonna show us a few things about using the pen and the buttons on it. I have a great video on this that I'll link down below. So we're just gonna skip this for now. It's gonna talk about the feeling and the tactile um, feedback of it. We're gonna go next. And then it's gonna tell you to test it out. I'm gonna skip that as well. Uh, do you want to send privacy data to Microsoft? I don't mind. We're going to go get started. And it's going to show you here your device information in the top right hand corner. It also tells you there's a new version of this application. So we're going to update that. And that's going to take us to the Microsoft Store where it's going to update all of our applications. While it does this, I'm going to jump back to that app and show you around a little bit. Because what I want to go to down the bottom here is of course where it says pen pressure. So when you're setting up your Surface Pen, it comes default set at 50%, but you can actually use this to control how light or how heavy you want the pen pressure to be. So I'm gonna use the back of the pen as an eraser right now to get rid of that, I guess, drawing pad. And heavy means that I don't have to press very hard and lots of ink is gonna come out. If I make it lighter though, that same amount of pressure is actually gonna put out a lot less ink. From this page here, I'm actually gonna go on the settings and this is gonna take us to the Windows Pen settings because there's even more customization we can do there for the Surface Pen. Let's open that up. And this is actually gonna give us a much more in-depth actually control of our Surface Pen. We can choose which hand we're gonna work with, left or right. You can turn on the tactile signals. So if you have a Surface Slim Pen 2 and a newer Surface device, this actually gives you vibrations when you are using the pen and you can choose the intensity of those. I'll leave it at 50% for now. And then you have the down the bottom here, additional pen settings. This is where it gets really cool. So what I'd recommend is actually turning on the third, fourth option uh, from the top, which is ignore touch input when I'm using my pen. You turn that on, that means you can rest your hand on the screen and it's just gonna listen to the pen and not your hand, which means you've got awesome palm rejection turned on right now. And then if I scroll up, I did skip over this one uh, because it has moved around in the settings here, but the option of choose what your pen shortcut does, at the back of your Surface Pen, you can press it and do a few different things. So by default, it is set to single click to open the Microsoft whiteboard. A double click is set to do a screen snip. 
and then a press and hold launches that whiteboard again. So this is where you can actually drop this down and choose a range of different actions you want it to do. So instead of doing a single click to Microsoft whiteboard, actually I like that and I keep that there. I like the fact of a double, cl double click for a screen snip, makes it really easy to quickly take screenshots. But then this press and hold, maybe you want it to do something different. Maybe you want it to open a program like OneNote or Sticky Notes, or you can open either a program, which is a older x64 bit application, or you can open an app, which is something that you download from the Windows Store. I'm gonna select on open an app, then it's gonna give us a list of all the applications installed in our computer. And I'm gonna go for an example, Microsoft Edge. So now when I press and hold the back of the pen, it will launch me straight into Microsoft Edge. If your device came with the Surface Pen version 4 or earlier, it wouldn't be paired out of the box like the Slim Pen was just then. So I'll show you how to pair that up right now as well. You wanna open up the settings and go into Bluetooth. And then we're gonna go into the pair new device where it says here on the right hand side, pair. I'm gonna go add a device. It's gonna pop up with this menu and then we're simply gonna go on the first option of Bluetooth. This is also how you set up things like Bluetooth keyboards and mice and things like that. I'm gonna select on Bluetooth device and on the surface pen, I'm gonna press and hold until the light pops up on the back here. And there is no battery in this pen, but what would happen, uh, so the battery in this pen is dead, but what would happen is it would pop up here as a Bluetooth device called surface pen something, something. Then you just select on that and then you pair that pen as well. Bit embarrassing, I should have checked the battery beforehand, but this has been sitting in the drawer for quite a while. Now that the Windows update is running in the background, we've set up and customized our Surface Pen. We're gonna launch into the Microsoft Store to download some applications from the new Windows 11 Microsoft Store, which is much better than what was available in Windows 10. Down the bottom here, it is already signed up into our Microsoft account. So we're gonna go on our library in the bottom left-hand corner. This is great if you already have a history of Windows 11 or Windows 10 PC, because this will show you all the applications that you already own. If you drop the sword and filter option, you can show by date, by name, and you can show products, uh, installed products only. I'm actually gonna untick that. So it's gonna show all the applications that I own, which means it's easy for me to bring across the apps that I've owned on an older computer. And I'm gonna scroll through and I can pick the ones that I wanna get. But for this example, I'm gonna show you how to search for them instead and download them for the first time. At the top here, you have the search bar. And the first thing we'd search for is Surface just in case your computer didn't have that Surface application installed, you'd find the Surface and then you'd have the install option here, but it's already installing. The next app that I download and install is called Drawboard PDF because it is my favorite PDF annotating tool. Um, and with the Surface device and a Surface Pen, it just makes it so much easier to mark up and annotate over PDF documents. I've got a great video on that, which I'll link down below on how to mark up PDF documents. I'm gonna hit install on this. The other app that I like downloading is called Quick Look, which essentially allows you to press a space bar and it gives you a quick preview of an application that you're looking at um, or a program or a file. So it makes it a much faster way of actually checking something than always having to open up in the full app. It gives you a quick look or a preview of it. So I'm gonna install Quick Look. The next app is a fast way to switch between light and dark mode, which we're gonna go through in a little bit. It's called Auto Dark Mode. In the search option, I just typed in Dark Mode, but Auto Dark Mode pops up as well. So we're gonna install this. Uh, I do like listening to music, so I will download Spotify and install and uh, sign into Spotify later on. So I'm gonna go install on that. And is Power Toys in here yet? And Microsoft Power Toys, amazing extension tool, um, which I'd recommend downloading and installing and playing around with. This allows you to fully customize your computer as well. So I'm gonna install Power Toys. So these are some of the core applications that I want to install on my computer. And I'm gonna let these run and download in the background. To check on the status of these, we're gonna go down into the bottom corner on our library. And this is gonna show you all the downloads that are currently happening. And then once it loads, it'll show you all the applications loading on your computer here as well. I'm gonna just go get updates and update all because that is gonna let this push through and download all the updates, even for the apps you can't see here, but we know the ones that are downloading and installing on the computer over here. 
So in the theme of updating things, I am actually gonna launch into Microsoft Word just to make sure that Word is installed on this computer already. So to make sure Microsoft Word is fully updated, I'm gonna go File, go down into the Account, and then I'm just going to um, go Update Options, and then just go Update up Now, check for updates. Make sure we get the latest version of Microsoft Office installed in our computer. You can see here it's now gonna download in the background. Windows 11 comes with a set of pre-defined applications on your start menu here, which I really don't like at all because there is just so much here that I think it doesn't really help anybody. And if there's apps here that you don't use, get rid of them. You have a few ways of getting rid of them on here. You can either unpin the app so it removes it from, this, from the pin menu, or you can completely uninstall it. What I'm gonna show you now is how to customize your pinned apps here by simply right clicking on an application, and then you can either unpin it from the start, which is gonna remove it from view, but won't delete it off your computer, or you can go uninstall. Amazon Prime actually don't need, so I'm gonna uninstall that. It's gonna ask if you wanna uninstall the program. I'm gonna go yes, it's gonna get rid of it. Same with uh, Click Champ Editor. I'm gonna unpin that, because I will use it later on, but I don't want it at my start screen. The start screen really should be just a few apps that you use all the time that you want really quick access to. So I'm gonna unpin that. TikTok, I can definitely get rid of you, uninstall. Instagram, I don't need you, goodbye. The Xbox app, you can also use your hand to do this. I'm gonna press and hold with my finger. So if you didn't know, pressing and holding with your finger actually gives you a right click and it gives you a bigger context menu than if you use right click on your trackpad. So I'm gonna press and hold on the Xbox button here and then I'm simply going to unpin same with Disney, I can get rid of you, so I can actually fully uninstall the Disney application. So you, you can see my pin section is now looking a lot neater, a lot cleaner. It's just got the programs that I use all the time. If you wanna bring an app from all your apps onto the pin section, you simply go all apps, you can search for it or you can scroll for it. Drawboard PDF, I'm gonna right click on that. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna right click on that. Sometimes it's easier with the trackpad. Then I'm gonna go pin to start. And then if I go back to the start menu, you can see drawboard PDF is now here. Then I can just move things around and customize it the way that I want. So I'd recommend figuring out which applications you want for you on your start screen here, unpinning all the stuff you don't need and only putting on here the stuff that is important to you. When we first turned on the Surface device, we did set up Windows 11 facial recognition. And what we're gonna do now is actually improve that facial recognition by simply pressing the start button, typing in the word face, and you can see the option here of set up face sign in. We're gonna turn that on. This is gonna take us into the settings option. And then at the top here, it says facial recognition, Windows hello. We're gonna drop that down. And then there's a button here called improve recognition. We're gonna turn on improve recognition. What it's gonna do is it's gonna take another scan of your face. So that means if you've got glasses on or you wear glasses sometimes, put them on, take the scan again, or if you're in low light or bright light, this is just gonna give it even more data points to make sure the login is faster and more secure. And it goes back to this screen here where it just takes a quick scan of my face and then it's gonna say all done. You've improved recognition. You can of course go improve recognition again, um, but this is just how you, if you've got different hairstyles and if different things you wear on your face, this is a really good way of making sure your computer is always gonna recognize that it's you no matter your outfit for the day. Windows 10 had some amazing touchscreen gestures, such as when you're swiping from the left and the right hand side of the screen, which I actually think aren't as good as in Windows 11. When I swipe in from the left hand side, I'm now greeted with this, um, this bit of a news update, which doesn't really mean much to me right now. So if you wanna customize this, you simply select on your icon in the top right hand corner, and then you can actually choose which widgets you wanna show on your screen here. And then you can also select on the three dots and you can go customize your widgets. So you can move things around once you customize. Uh, you can unpin them if you don't like something, unpin your calendar. And then you can really customize this screen here to what works best for you. You can change the size of the widgets to small, medium, or large. And then of course you can press the plus button and you can even add more widgets and information here as well. So I think this is gonna be a work in progress with Windows 11. Um, where right now it's not fully functional. But if you do wanna customize it, you simply select on your profile, you choose what the widgets can do. And then of course you can select on the ellipses to unpin or customize a widget. 
and then you can actually press the plus button to choose which widgets that you want on the screen here as well. Say for example, you wanted your to-do list or say you wanted your tips on here or your photos. This is just gonna bring them straight over. Then you can grab them by the top and move them around on the screen. The taskbar or down the bottom here next to the start button has been a staple of Windows for decades. And in Windows 11, they've moved it to the center of the screen. I personally like it, it's a nice fresh way of working with Windows, but a lot of people are used to having your start bar on the left hand side. So if you wanna put your start button back to the left hand side, what we can do is press start. We're gonna type in the word taskbar and go into our taskbar settings. And then this is gonna give us a few items to customize up the top here. Say you don't want the search button, you don't want the task view, and you actually don't want the chat icon. You can simply get rid of those and you can see they're removing from the bottom here. And then you can actually choose the taskbar behavior down the bottom and you can choose where you want to align your taskbar. You can have it sent over to the left-hand side and this has now moved the start button back to the left-hand side where it used to be in Windows 10. I'd also recommend turning on the pen menu. So that means when your pen is in use, you get another pen icon. So if I grab my Surface Pen now, what happens is I get a little customization down the bottom here, as well as a few ways of quickly launching into my applications when I first grab the pen. I can quickly launch into a program like the whiteboard, the snipping tool, my settings, or you can go on the learn more section for the pen. So having this turned on gives you this little uh, taskbar overflow at the bottom here with a few pen settings, as well as a little pen icon that gives you that same thing if it ever disappears from the start. So we are halfway through setting up this device and what I would recommend now is actually going back into your update settings by pressing start and typing the word update to go into Windows Update because you can see here it's still downloading part of a Windows 11 22H2 or a version of Windows but it also requires a restart as well. So you can either wait for this to finish installing or you can go restart now but I'd recommend to make sure that you know, within the first hour or so of having your computer turned on, you download those updates and you also do a restart to make sure things are installed correctly and you have the latest version of Windows on your computer. I'm gonna restart now because what is happening in my Microsoft Store is that it is trying to download some of those applications, but because there is a restart and an install pending, it is not actually installing properly those apps. So I'm gonna restart now and this should force some of those downloads and installs to install correctly. And then it should also allow our applications to start installing correctly as well. So to push through those updates, it only took about a couple of minutes. I'm gonna go back into the update section again, launch into Windows Update Settings, and then we're gonna start searching again. You can see it's downloading that Windows 11 22H2. If I go into my Microsoft Store, it should now allow all those other applications to install correctly because it had some installs pending. So if we go into our library down the bottom left-hand corner here, I'm simply gonna go get updates and this should start pushing through everything again. If I go over to dark mode, I have to force that install again, dang. Two customizations I like to make with Windows 11 is turning on the dark mode as well as changing the desktop here and adding second and third desktops. So to change your dark mode, you simply go into the start menu, type in the word dark mode, and then you can see here you have the color settings. We're gonna launch that, or you can use the application that I downloaded called dark mode. We're gonna open this one up instead, and this should appear in the bottom right-hand corner in our taskbar. And I'm actually gonna grab that and drop it down the bottom so it's always accessible for me. So I can, in the Windows way, I can actually go in the settings here and choose my mode from light. I can make it dark or I can go custom. And this is gonna turn everything on my computer into dark theme. Or if I wanted to, to get even faster, keeping auto dark mode in the taskbar down the bottom, I can right click on that and I can go force dark theme or force light theme. It's just the faster way for me to do it. And you can see here down the bottom, the taskbar changes, the start menu changes. It's a much faster way for me to just quickly turn on dark mode. The other thing I like to do is actually have multiple desktops on Windows 11. So if you scroll up, so if you swipe up with four fingers, or I did remove the option before, let me go back into our taskbar. I'm gonna keep task view back on. Task view is this little option here, shows us multiple desktops. The Windows 11 wallpapers are pretty average, so what I'd recommend is actually downloading some of your own 4K wallpapers. I like using a website called Wallpaper Hub. Wallpaper Hub 
app is a free website that gives you all these awesome, um, a lot of them are Microsoft branded uh, wallpapers, but if you scroll down the bottom of this website, it actually shows you wallpapers by resolution and it has a lot of the Surface devices here as well. For now, I'm actually just gonna go into Surface Laptop Studio 2. So on desktop one here, I'm simply gonna press start. I'm gonna type in the word wallpaper where it's gonna take me to background images and settings. And then I'm actually gonna customize this wallpaper by going by picture, but I'm gonna choose a photo, I'm gonna browse, and I'm gonna say for my desktop, I'm gonna put in the internals of the Surface Laptop Studio, because I think that looks pretty cool. Now I'm gonna swipe over to my second desktop, so I can either press on the task view down the bottom here and jump to the desktop, or I can use a four finger swipe on the Surface device, or I can use four fingers on the trackpad to scroll through. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna go over to my wallpaper, change the background image on this one. Let's drop it onto that nice half moon. And then I'm gonna swipe up. So I'm gonna show you on desktop one, we have our surface internals, swipe across. We have our half moon, swipe again. We've got the standard wallpaper. And this is a nice way to actually just set up different virtual wallpapers on your computer. It's really easy to do and you can put any picture you want. You can go and put in different slideshows. Um, if we go into the wallpaper section, I recommend having a play around with this, but customizing and changing the wallpaper to something that suits you is one of the best ways to personalize your computer from the start. A lot of people will still ask whether they need an antivirus on their computer. Windows 10, Windows 11 come with Windows Defender built in, and this means you don't actually have to install any third-party antivirus tools. But if you look at the settings right now, if we go into the show hidden icons, your Windows security has actually a few actions you need to turn on when your computer is first setting up. So we're gonna open this up in Windows security, and then it's gonna actually just have a app and browser control, which I do recommend turning on, just to make sure that you have the most secure device uh, possible from the start. Other than that, your Windows security is always up to date. It's run by Windows Update. You can, of course, on the left-hand side, go into your virus protections and do scans and things like that. It's under the whole banner of just simple Windows security now. So if you're ever looking for this option, just press start, type in Windows security, and this will take you to this Windows Defender application. But there's really not much else you need to do when it comes to securing your device. You just go into Windows security when you first turn on your computer. Make sure you have all these green ticks turned on. I also customized down the bottom a little quick action settings in our Wi-Fi volume and uh, battery icon by simply selecting on the three icons here and press, pressing on the pen icon. From here, I can remove some of these applications that I might not want quick access to like airplane mode or battery saver, but I also go add and I quickly add in my cast as well as adding in my projection options. And you can move these around if you, oh, you can't move them around now. Ah, huh, didn't know that. Um, so you can't move them around now, but you can actually just go done. Now I have a quick option to quickly change the projection settings of my computer or casting to wirelessly cast this to the displays around me. When I'm in this option here, I also go into focus assist settings. Right now, focus assist is not turned on. I hate distractions on my computer when things ping and buzz and things like that. So I always turn this on to priority only to get rid of all those annoying pings from every time an application does something. Priority only means that I only get notified by the apps that I wanna be notified by. If you wanna customize this, you can right click on priority only and go into go to settings. And this is gonna allow you to scroll down and turn on the applications of the priority list by going on customize the list. And then you can choose the applications that can notify you when you have the setting turned on. I keep this as pretty much no applications, especially Xbox Game Bar, I can remove you because I don't need you there. And Microsoft Xbox app, you're gonna disappear as well. And there you have it. That is how I'd set up, customize and optimize my Surface device out of the box for the first time. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And of course, if you want to supercharge the ways your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. If you have any other tips on how you'd set up your Surface device, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.